Welcome back to the Make Time for Success podcast. This is episode number 69. What does it take to build a successful business, aside from a whole lot of guts? My special guest today happens to be my trusted and beloved business coach, James Wetmore. He is here today to give you an in-depth look at how much personal development work is required for you to show up in the way you need to, to have a thriving business. You're going to learn from him a critical component. It's actually a way of being that will allow you to nurture your business and to see challenges and pathways that are ahead of you very clearly. I encourage you to listen to this episode, even if you're not a business owner or an aspiring business owner, because there's so many great lessons about living a good life in this episode. For 10 years, James taught entrepreneurs and online business owners how to leverage the power of online video and YouTube marketing to reach more people, share their message, and convert more customers. In 2016, James made a massive shift to focus on a big gap missing in the marketplace, the mindset needed for entrepreneurship. He launched a totally woo-woo podcast, one that I loved. It's called the Mind Your Business Podcast, and he also launched his signature program, Business by Design. Today, he helps coaches, experts, content creators, and authors not only to craft better marketing messages, but also how to ditch the hustle mentality and create success from the inside out. James shares great insights throughout this episode, as well as real life and real time examples of how we can never really fully avoid problems, but we can learn how to become a master at dealing with them. I encourage you to keep listening to the end of the episode where James shares a special offer to join him in a live workshop called Nail Your Niche, where he will teach you how to discover the specific audience that you want to address and impact. You'll hear the partner link that I share at the end of the episode, which will enable you to register for the Nail Your Niche live workshop. Let's go listen to the episode now. You're going to love it. Hi, I'm Dr. Christine Lee, and I'm a psychologist and a procrastination coach. I've helped thousands of people move past procrastination and overwhelm so they could begin working to their potential. In this podcast, you're going to learn powerful strategies for getting your mind, body, and energy to work together so that you can focus on what's really important and accomplish the goals you want to achieve. When you start living within your full power, you're going to see how being productive can be easy and how you can create success on demand. Welcome to the Make Time for Success podcast. Hi, everyone. It is Dr. Christine Lee. Today is a very special day for me, actually, because I have my business coach and mentor and colleague, James Wedmore on the show. He is actually someone that I need to thank over and over again. I just thanked him a couple of times in preparing for this recording, but I want to do this publicly also because working with him, learning from him, listening to his podcast has really changed my life, has changed my business, has changed my outlook on a lot of things. And I feel like I continue to learn from him. And by the way, Dear podcast listener, almost, I would say a good 50% of the guests that you've heard on this show, I have met through James's community of students and colleagues and collaborators, and I'm grateful for that too. So James, welcome to the show. Wow. Well, thanks for having me. I'm excited. This is going to be great. This is going to be great. Okay. Can you start our listeners off with a description of how you came to be the business owner that you are and how you develop the type of business that you're running now. If you could just describe. Yeah. Yeah. I'll do it in the that. shortest version I can. Cause we'll carefully open up a whole can of words with that. Cause I, I've been a serial entrepreneur my whole life, like starting businesses as a little kid, even by the time I was 15, back in the late nineties, I had an online business parting out classic motorcycles, you know, selling it on eBay. And so I was always drawn to business and I was always drawn to the internet. And um, my first foray into what I'm doing today happened about 15 years ago. I was uh, 
bartender by day at a restaurant. And then at, at night on the weekends, I would private party bartend for private clients, like, like someone who's having their 50th birthday for their wife or that uh, wedding. you know. And I would show up with a bar and I would mix the drinks all night. And I was like, I'm in business. And I was reading voraciously every book I could get my hands on about business, about marketing, anything to learn. And I started realizing um, the people that were I was learning from were teaching and getting paid to teach. They were writing books. They had programs you could buy. And I was like, I just had a light bulb moment. And this is November of 2007. I'll never forget it. I was like, I want to do that. That's what I want to do. Because I found myself always um, loving teaching growing up. Like People would pay me to be a, a, a tutor or do their math homework or write their essays for them. And they'd pay me. And I was like, this is great. I love learning. I love teaching. So my first digital product was an on online bartending school because it was all I knew. And I had the idea in 2007. It's called Bartend for Profit. And I created it. I launched it. I made every single mistake you could possibly imagine. And lo and behold, I made my first, very first sale on the internet for my bartending school for 200 bucks on April 18th, 2008, the day that would forever change my life. Because it was in that moment that it was like, First of all, it validated all the hard work, everything I'd put into. And it was like the, just the sweetest moment of joy. And I had a thought, a little seed planted in my mind that said, well, if I could get one sale, I could get a second. I could get a third. And that was, that was 15 years ago. And today I have an eight-figure-a-year company. And it's same but different. I'm getting paid to teach what I know, to teach, to coach, to offer my methodologies and, and my frameworks. And I've done it in multiple niches o over the years. And today, with that level of experience, you know, comes some form of mastery. I teach others how to get started and get going with their own digital products. Yes. And you've helped me and so many people. It's just very interesting to see people learn from their mistakes, be aware of their mistakes, and then try something new. And I think you're very creative with just using your background your years of experience to give the student a new way to look at things. And it doesn't have to be more work. I think part of your years of experience involved periods of working yourself yeah. too much. You were worrying too much. You were making a lot of mistakes. Could you describe a few mistakes that you <laughs> notice people getting into, getting themselves into because they want to succeed online or in business? Absolutely. Yeah. And I was guilty of all of these. So when I speak from these, I'm speaking from experience. I mean, it's kind of like, it's, it's hard because there's like a whole category and then I can go into the specifics. But I would say at first is the moment you say you have a business, there's a change. But we don't notice the change and that's the mistake. And because we don't notice the change, we make the mistake of operating and acting from the programming of an employee. So if anyone listening, if I hired you and I said, will you come work for me? You know, I'd give you some training. I'd give you some direction. I'd give you a job description and, and I'd help you along the way and you'd get to work and you'd, you'd do it. You'd do what you're told and you'd work hard. You know, you'd, you'd put in your 100% and no matter what, you'd get paid. People start a business and they think it works the same way. <laughs> if I just... Well, no one's telling me what to do. So I guess I'll just tell myself what to do and I'll just work hard. I'll put in the time and I'll get paid. And then they're not getting paid. And so they go, well, maybe I need to work harder and I need to do more things. And they're still not getting paid. And so underneath that is a lot of mistakes of what's happening. The first of which is understanding that the moment you have a business and people still argue with me with this. This is really funny. But that's like, it's a massive business blind spot. The moment you have a business, you have an entity, you have an organization. That's what really a business is. It's an entity, an organization that consists of actually multiple roles. No, 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 James. I don't have multiple roles. It's just me. Oh, I know it's just you. But there are multiple roles in every single business. I've never found a business that has one role. For example, even my bartending business, someone had to do the marketing, someone had to be the CEO, 
someone had to answer the phone calls when a prospective client called about, I saw your website, I saw your flyer. And someone had to show up at the events. Someone had to take the checks to the bank. Someone had to clean the bar equipment after the parties. I did all of that myself, but there were multiple roles because a role is a function that exists in the company. And so we go into business and there could be five, 10, 15 roles and you fill them all. But then the problem really occurs when you spend the majority of your time, effort, and energy in the roles that produce the least amount of value for your business. We tend to spend, when we're new in business, spend more time, effort, and energy in the things that are urgent, reactive, and seemingly important, but tend to actually be low value when it comes to the overall growth of the business, which means we avoid the high value activities, the revenue generating activities, the things that make a sale. And so people, and to say it bluntly, Christine, to say it in a kind of crude way, because I can be a bit of a contrarian and a tough love coach, but it's all coming from love. It's all coming from, please don't do what I did. Please don't experience what I went through. Please, five years, I got addicted to Adderall. I was working 14 hours a day. I, I dropped down to 140 pounds. I had to move back in with mom and dad. I wasn't making a dollar. Like All my friends, my girlfriend left me. All my friends didn't want anything to do with me. I became this crazy, unhealthy workaholic and still had nothing to show for it. I'm like, I'll prove them all wrong. And I just kept digging a hole deeper and deeper and deeper. And I don't want that for people. But the reality is, is most people are playing business, just like we played dress up or pretend as a kid. And they're playing business. Well, maybe if I work on my logo, maybe if I do another photo shoot and maybe change my branding around and I need a new website, and what about this about me page and boopity 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 boop. And I need a business plan and I need new business cards and I need all these little things. That is like, you're playing business. And the fact is, you ain't actually in business until there's a transaction. Right? Like if I sent you a check for your first amount of money for your business, you're like, now I'm in business. Correct. And until then, you ain't in business. So the big mistake people are doing is they're working and working and working and working and pushing and pushing and grinding and grinding and grinding. And they're not doing anything or the vast majority of the things are not putting them in the revenue generating activities that actually produce revenue. That revenue that you need to start fueling the rest of the growth of your business. Is this making sense? It makes a lot of sense. It also reminds me of a lot of mistakes that I've been making <laughs> as an guilty. online business <laughs> owner. So I'm, I'm sitting here and absorbing this as usual. And I absolutely agree that you need the transactions to be occurring to have the business. But what I've found is that the hurdles seem to be popping up even when the transactions are occurring, you know, that we can mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. make excuses for things. We, our energy can drop lower towards the end of a product launch. We could delay in really crafting our message so that it really attracts the right people. I think the areas for procrastination and delay and avoidance are all over the place even though I also find this to be really fun and exciting and interesting and like a challenge. So I'm wondering how you yourself and how you, how you coach other people, how do you keep the discipline of saying, let's keep this a business, let's keep this going strong, and let's not allow our personal stories and drama sabotage our business? Yeah. I have a simple 90% delete key solution to every symptom that you described. And then I can go into nuanced specifics beyond that. And it's one word, is one concept. And of course, saying it, I risk it being disregarded by most listeners as too simple because people want complicated, you know, like, oh, is there some magical routine you do? And you know, whatever that magically makes you more productive and higher performing. And, um, and then they hear something very simple, which will do that. And then they go, oh, that's too, yeah, I've heard that before. Okay. And so I'm worried that when I share that, that's what people will say. So I hope people listening will not do that because there's a big difference between what I'm going to share with you 
which some people already know, versus living your life that way? And the answer in one word is integrity. That is delete key for all the symptoms that you just described. And that is my delete key. Integrity means whole and complete. And you are your word. Who you are is your word. So it means you are whole and complete with your word. So integrity and self-integrity means to honor your word. It means it's time to look back and take back your power and see how powerful you are and that your word has power. And if we treated our word and what we give our word to as the most powerful thing in our lives, it would change everything in an instant. And it was a Harvard business professor, I think it's Dr. Steve Jensen and another individual, Warner Earhart, that, that began speaking about this. And they said, if you treated integrity, like every time you were out of integrity, it's kind of like a weird kind of way to look at this, but this is what they started doing, as every time you were out of integrity, and what that means, by the way, is unmet promises. Promises to yourself, to your company, to your team, but definitely starting with yourself, that you would lose a finger because that's the level of severity it is. It would be about two or three fingers before you get that this is the most important thing, right? Now, obviously, no one here is going to actually cut their fingers off. No one's asking to do that. But it's one of these things that unfortunately for so many people, even when they hear it, they go, they just say, what does that have to do with what we're talking about? Or yeah, 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 I've heard this before. And that's really unfortunate. But for me, I made honoring my word. Now, let me say it like this. I made my word the most important and powerful thing in my life and what I choose to give my word to. And that means I'm still out of integrity a lot of times. Okay. And that's not a bad thing. Just like if the lights are on or the lights are off, in your house, that's not a good or bad thing. It's just binary, on or off. So you're either in integrity or out of integrity. And when you're aware of it, you do what you can to clean it up. You do what you can to restore it, to be your word and honor your word when you can't. Like I was doing something else before this call and I had to stop doing that because I gave my word to being on this call at the top of the hour. And it would have been helpful to say, you know, I could just film this other video right now and da 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 da. And I said, no, because I got to be on this call right at the top of the hour. And here I was, right? And when that matters in your life, it changes everything. Don't believe me. There are countless studies done of companies that have seen anywhere from 200 to 400% increase in productivity and output without any increase in costs or labor or anything, simply because they made integrity their number one core value in their company. And that's it. I cannot stress enough that that is 90% of it, which is I say I'm going to do something. My team says they're going to do something and we just do it. End of sentence. And it becomes simple today, right? It's not always so simple when we start. But to go down that route for people, what you want to do is you want to begin to become present and aware of where the integrity issues in your life are and begin to note already in this moment in time where you have given your word to yourself and others and not fallen through and aligned with that action. And just begin to, 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 to become aware of it. And then continue to be present when you give your word to something. I'll call you tomorrow, Christine. Or let's do lunch. And we just throw it around like it doesn't matter. And that's the problem because it does matter. And we have to make it matter. Don't say you're going to do it if you're not going to do it. Tell people, let me get back to you on that. I do that all the time today. If you said like, hey, I'm going to be in Sedona tomorrow. Let's hang out, get lunch. Well, I'm like, I don't know my schedule. I don't know my calendar right now. And I'm traveling in two days. So I'm going to say, you know what? That sounds amazing. Let me get back to you on that. Let me let me see what I got going on and what it's on the to-do list and what's on my calendar before I commit to that. People don't do that. They just say, sure. Okay. And then they don't follow up. They don't call or they're late or whatever, right? And that has an impact in other people's lives, but it's impacting your own life the most because we create with our word. Everything is created because we speak it into existence first. We declare it. We speak it. We share it. And when we keep talking about things that we never do, we stop believing our own BS. Like we just don't believe ourselves anymore. That's why people stop setting goals, right? That's why 
people don't share their goals, you know, and that's fine. And we stop believing. And that's, and that's the problem. Now I'm going to say the last piece of this. Okay. Maybe two pieces. When I bring this up, I also run the risk of people then getting into a guilt and shame spiral. Don't do that. That's going to make it worse. That's out of integrity because you should have given your word to yourself to be nothing but kind and loving to yourself. So now you beat yourself up. You're out of integrity again. Okay. It's binary. It's neutral. It's the lights are on or the lights are off. This is either in integrity or out of integrity. It's not bad. It's not wrong. You're not inferior. It's nothing like that. It, you have to approach this with absolute neutrality. You're, you know, if someone says, James, you told me you do this yesterday and you didn't, we have an integrity issue. I get to say, you're absolutely right. They're not mad at me. They're not, um, you're a loser. It's just like, hey, you gave your word to something you didn't do. You're right, I did. Let me clean that up. It's no big deal. Let's just get our egos out of the way with it, okay? So we can't go into that. And then the last thing is I'm just gonna warn people, there's this concept of the veil of invisibility, which is some people hearing this are like, what? I'm always in integrity. What are you talking about? But your ego, which we all have one, does not like being out of integrity. So a part of you will experience integrity issues as really good logical reasons. We don't see the integrity issue. We see the reason. So if you're having that experience where someone was late to lunch or meeting up with you and you're like, hey, you were late. And they're like, no, I wasn't late. I was stuck in traffic. That's exactly what I'm talking about. I was busy. I got delayed. Someone grabbed my attention. So the phone rang. Da, da, da. These are all reasons. And they're justifiable reasons. They're legitimate. It doesn't mean it's not an integrity issue. So here's an example of this. Let's say we, Christine and I, I mean, this is so simple, but it's, it's everything. It's everything. I wouldn't be spending this much time on it if it wasn't. You know, we just mention it and move on like it was a little thing. It's a big thing. Because let's say, Christine and I say we're going to be on this call at one o'clock my time. And then an important phone call comes in. And I look right before and I go, oh my goodness, I'm going to be late for her call for this podcast. I would tell the person on the phone, hey, listen, I know this is an emergency. We got to deal with this, but I had a one o'clock. Let me tell them I'm going to be late. Boom. That's all it takes. Hey, Christine, I had an emergency. Someone called me. I need 20 minutes. Is that okay with you? Or do you want to reschedule? What do you want to do? You know, just text me what you want to do, but I got to take this. This is an emergency. And uh, we're not doing that. We just don't show up or we forget or we have an excuse. We have a reason. And we're doing that with others, but we're doing it with ourselves the most. And that is what you mean by the veil of invisibility, that these other logical reasons are preventing us from saying, actually, this is an integrity issue for me. Yeah. I just didn't do what I said I was going to do, period. Well, but I just don't know how or whatever. Like I got, I got this remodel situation that I'm in. That's why I'm recording in my, in my camper van. And part of the big problem is some of these guys are completely out of integrity. And I see it all the time. And it's, it's the number one cause for performance breakdowns in a team and an organization. And one of these guys wants to blame me. You know, I, I say, hey, you said you were going to do this and you didn't. Hey, you, you said you'd be here at this time and you didn't. And he just comes back and I'm just pointing it out as like, you keep giving your word to me and you keep breaking your word. And everything is met with excuses. Yeah, but blah, 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 blah. And he can't see that it's merely an integrity issue. All he can experience is an excuse or a reason or a justification. And it's like, those can still be valid. Hey, there was a ton of traffic or I forgot my sprayer or whatever. Sure. But I sat here waiting. You didn't call, you didn't text, you didn't communicate, you didn't let me know, nothing. So you broke your word to me and he just sees excuses and reasons. And here's the problem with that, folks, is in order to change or shift anything in your life, you have to see clearly and get to the bottom of it and get to truth, get to facts. Most people are dealing with distortions. So they have a really hard time solving anything because they're not dealing with reality. And that's where this conversation and distinction around integrity is so powerful because it's facts. It's, I will be there at one o'clock and you either are or you're not. I'm going to go live today for my first training at 11 o'clock. You either do it or you don't. 
doesn't matter. It's like, well, pfft, there was a, an emergency. Yeah, exactly. It's still out of integrity. It's not bad or wrong. It's just, you said you were going to do something. You didn't. Period. You know, and, and then we're dealing with that. Now we're dealing with that. Okay, well, you know, how do we clean that up? How do we fix that? How do we restore it? You know what I mean? Most people are not doing that. I was not doing that for a long time. I kept talking about what I wanted to do. You hear it in people's language. Well, I want to. It would be nice to. I wish I could. If I, I would. And today, everything I do is, when I decide I'm going to do it, it's I will. This is going to happen. And when you make your word your most important thing, it's more important than the things that are preventing you from being your word. Like, what if they don't like it? What if it's not perfect? What if this? What if that? And I've chosen to prioritize the power of my word over any of those. And it causes me to do the thing I said I was going to do. Is that, is that help? Does that make sense? It's beautiful. First of all, I have so many thoughts. One is that you're Mm -hmm. a fantastic teacher and you've just demonstrated the power of having a good teacher, being a good teacher is that you can explain from all the different vantage points in a way. And I think I'm going to emphasize one thing that you've said that I don't want our audience to miss. And that is that you also have to be kind and loving to yourself. The first, yeah, the first thing you should say is I am committed to loving myself and honoring myself. And then if you say that to yourself, then you are out of integrity if you treat yourself with anything but kindness. I kind of put you in a trap there. It's like a little double bind. You're, You're stuck. You have to love yourself. It has to start with you. It's so important. Yes. And from my work with my clients, I think that's so much of what I focus on because people are coming yeah. in, hating themselves, feeling guilty, feeling ashamed, feeling mm-hmm. like they can't do things. And that essential relationship with their healthy, vibrant, awesome self is mm-hmm. not fully something that they rely on, something that they believe in, something that they use actively to take action in the world. And I think there are tremendous costs to treating yourself in that way, treating yourself so badly. And so I just wanted to double emphasize that part of the lesson. I think it's because people are using that as a motivation strategy. Yes. Right. It's almost like, um, to use a crude example, it's like, you know, when someone, you see in the movies, like someone whipping the horse to go faster, like, yeah, yeah. And it's like, we just do that to ourselves, thinking that's going to get you to go faster. and. It's not because you might be yeah, yeah yourself, but you also have the brakes on. So it's like trying to give the gas on the car by whipping it, by whipping yourself, but you also have the parking brake on. So now you're just beating yourself up, but you ain't moving. And then you're beating yourself up even more that beating yourself up and not moving didn't work. And that's never my motivation strategy. And I'm a very productive, high performance individual. And the secret is um, the brakes aren't on, for starters. So there's like no counter resistance for me. And I use positive motivation to move me towards, not negative to push me away. And we're all wired differently, but I do what I do because I love doing it. And so it's like a vacuum. It's always pulling me forward. And so you might want to ask, you know, talking to your listeners, like you may want to ask yourself, like what drives me? What am I driven by? What am I moving towards? What lights me up and naturally propels me into action? You should be, when it comes to your work, especially as if you're self-employed, your own business, you should have it. I mean, there's always things we have to do that we don't want to do, like taxes. You know, if you have to fire someone, I never look forward to firing someone, okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The 90% of your day and your work should have this feeling like you can't not do it. You're, you're compelled to do it. You have to stop yourself from doing it, you know, cause it just lights you up and excites you so much. And it's really sad because there's a lot of people that can't get there because for whatever reason, they've decided that life needs to be a struggle and it needs to be painful and sacrifice. And you have to, do all these things in order to be deserving and worthy of it. And those are very dangerous 
slippery slopes to go down because if you're being driven by this this core programming of I have to sacrifice and work a certain amount to be deserving of this, I'm going to tell you what's going to happen because it happened to me. You are going to put the work in. And then wait, one day you're going to wake up and you're going to realize no matter how much work and effort and sacrifice, it, I'll still never feel enough. It's like chasing a mirage in the desert. You keep walking closer to it and it keeps backing up. And that happened to me. And I fell into a really, really deep depression. And I just, I burnt out. I couldn't move because I, I was putting on. I mean, I got addicted to Adderall. That's like legal speed. That stuff is nasty. And I took it so I could work harder. That's so bad. And I was popping 20 milligrams a day. I looked like a skeleton. I was putting 10, 12, 14 hours a day. And I, was, I, I had nothing to show for it, you know? So I'm not doing my work and the work that I do as a survival strategy to compensate for some sense of a lack of worthiness or deservedness. I do what I do because obviously I love what I do. So there's the enjoyment, the fun in what I do, the purpose, fulfillment aspect of it, is that it helps people. And part of my context for life is I'm all about growth. So everything I do is an opportunity for me to continue to grow. Let me see if I can do this now. Let's see what else I can do. Let's see if I have, have it within me, you know, and it's this fun journey. Thank you for saying that because I wanted to note that working with you and learning from you is super fun. <laughs> that yeah. We get to see you building a van and <laughs> renovating homes and surfing and whatever it is that lights you up, we get to see and we get to see the right mood for building growth, that it does not have to involve suffering. It actually shouldn't. And I think Suffering is really valorized. I think I definitely grew up with that feeling like I just need to push more. I just need to stay up all night. I just need to figure some way out. You know, you can't give up. So, so what are you going to do? Right. And there were, there was illness, there was stress, there was lost sleep, there were lost years for me. And I'm so grateful that now I don't do that stuff yeah. and that I have enjoyed so much more fun and so much more productivity because I've straightened out a few things that needed to get straightened out. And entrepreneurship has been one of the vehicles that has been useful for me to learn even more about myself. I'll share one more story. And that is when I entered your program, which is called Business by Design, one of the first modules was about 100% responsibility. And really that is very much connected to the integrity idea. And for me, it was a total light bulb moment because I totally just got the message right as I saw the module because I was just like, oh, well, if everything's up to me and I'm responsible for everything that I do, then that just makes everything clearer. It just makes everything easier because I can't fault other people. I can't be worried about what other people are doing yeah. related to me. I, my responsibility is to take care of what I'm doing. And I think I was just a little bit fuzzy about that, maybe in my business, maybe in my life. And now since learning that, the integrity lesson, I just feel so much better. It just feels like things are super clear, right? I might not do like you like you honestly admitted. I might not always be in integrity, but I know when I am and I'm not because I have that as a framework inside. Absolutely. Yeah, and that, you know, the responsibility is a it's uh it's a powerful distinction and and conversation because you know, look, things are always going to happen. Like this remodel disaster. I'm, I, what I love, Christine knows this about me, but I love to take whatever I'm going through in my life and use it to first teach myself. What, what is this teaching me? But then also I love to pass that on to my students. So I use my real life examples in my life to share as powerful stories and metaphors. And uh, the short version of the story is, is I had a guy that I basically gave the, the reins to, the responsibility to, and he messed up big time. And he damaged the second story of the house to the point where it was sinking in on the first story. 
destroying the structural integrity of the home. And that's not okay what he did. Okay. You know, he caused that. That's a fact. I mean, I even went to him. I said, this looks bad. I don't think we should be doing this. Should we stop? And he said, no, trust me, everything's okay. And he kept going. And then someone else came in and said, what have you done here? You guys have to stop. He was wrong. And I trusted him. And in that, I can sit there and blame, 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 blame all, all I want. That's fine. But I also choose, and this is, this is it, what it is. It's a choice to see what role did I play in causing this? What was my role in this? And the reality is, is I chose to bring him on. I chose to hire him. I chose this individual. And the more I got present to that, the more I saw that there were red flags and warnings along the way that I ignored and didn't pay attention to. And so responsibility isn't so much about blame, okay? Blame takes you out of the game, okay? If all you want to do is blame and complain, nothing's gonna good's going to come out of that. Yes, he told me this is okay and kept going, and those are facts. And it was not okay, and he shouldn't have got going. And, you know, that's that. But if I just sat there and cried in the corner and complained and blamed and say, it's everyone else's fault, I wouldn't have been able to deal with it powerfully. So responsibility is a choice, not a fact. It's a choice to choose to see your life and your business as something that you choose to be 100% responsible for. I am choosing to be 100% responsible. Again, still other people and exter- external factors and variables can play a role. But because I stayed in that responsibility, I stayed in cause. So there's a very powerful distinction between cause and effect. And when you choose 100% responsibility, you are choosing to be at cause in your life. So I caused a new solution. I caused a new opportunity. I caused a solution. Instead of going, there's nothing I can do and I'm hopeless and helpless and da 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 I said, well, here's what we're going to do now. I'm taking back over and here's how we're going to solve this. And I solved it. And as I get on this call, it's been a week and four days. It's all done. It's all saved. My whole house. I mean, it was, it was touch and go. It was nasty. It was very scary because I was living underneath. So it's like the ceiling's going to cave in on me. It was bad. Solved. All fixed. You know? We're not, the, the details of how I brought in another crew is irrelevant to the to point of the story, but I stayed at cause. And when it comes to your business, no one else is going to be responsible for your sales, your revenue, your income, your profit, but you. You start blaming other people, that's fine. Maybe someone else did play a role in it, but blaming someone doesn't change the facts or the situation of the matter. So choosing responsibility is a powerful and not easy thing to do. But when you do it, It's like this. I tell my students, to the degree in which you accept what is, is the degree in which you have the power to deal with what is. To the degree in which you accept what is. So you can't accept what is when it's everyone else's fault and you're just blaming, 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 because that's a form of resistance. So you notice the difference when you blame, when you're angry, and you're allowed to be angry, okay, we're all humans having a human experience here. You're allowed to be those things, okay? You're allowed to do that. I had my freak out moment. I was very angry. But then I had to go into solution mode. And that's why Einstein said you can't solve a problem from the same level of consciousness that created it. So now I did my little, I had my little tiff. I had my little pity party. I dust myself off. And now I got to handle this. And the problem is people stay stuck in that more, you know, victim blame and complain mode. And I had to pull myself out of that. And I had to deal with what is. I had to accept, well, this is what it is now. I had to be at peace with that. This is what the situation is. It is what it is. It's a very powerful, simple thing. I just, well, this is what it is now. And now I got to handle this. Done. The complaints are done. The, 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 the anger is done. Now I got to get to work. And when we're in business, that's endless. I think there's a silly notion that people have that it's like Disney might have implanted us in in our young little minds that everything's supposed to be happily ever after. I have a very successful business. It generates a lot of revenue. It has a very healthy profit margin. My CFO consultant is like, your numbers are incredible. I can't believe you have that big of a profit margin. And I still have problems all the time. 
There's always problems. There's always something. And people think that you're not supposed to have problems. Business owners aren't supposed to have problems. Like what? No, that's endless. That's that's normal. And so people then try to resist that. No, that's wrong. It's bad. I shouldn't de- be dealing with stuff. It's like, no. If you're growing, if you're up to big things, expect problems. The difference is the successful entrepreneurs, like the truly successful ones, have simply shifted how they are being with a problem. And there's a lot of, I mean, this is a a whole nother conversation, Christine, but what I tell people is the things that I deal with in a week in my business today would have crushed the James from 10 to 14 years ago. The level of problems that I can handle today would have crushed me then. That's, That's just because I've built up a resilience uh, emotional, mental maturity, a new context for life that it's okay. It's everything's okay. Don't sweat the small stuff. And it's all small stuff, even when your house is falling apart. Right. And that takes time to cultivate and develop that. But I tell people today that your business will grow to the level of problems that you can handle and not an inch further. And so people want to change everything outside. I want no problems. I want it all go away and I want more money. But the greatest changes are the ones that come from within. Because your business will grow to the level of problems that you can handle and no further. And when you have haters or critics and issues and stuff right now, and you're like, this is too much, I can't, you think your business is going to take on more? No. Because problems don't go away when you grow your business. They're just different problems. And problems aren't a bad thing at all. And every problem, this is law, this is fact, this is ancient wisdom, every problem comes with a solution. There is no problem that doesn't have a solution. We live in a dualistic universe, so you can't have hot without cold, left without right, good without evil. You can't have problem without solution. Doesn't exist. It's law in the universe. We are dualistic, you know, law of polarity. Can't have one without the other. It's up to us to find it. And that's up to us, but it exists. So, you know, I go on tangents, Christine, so sorry. <laughs> no apologies needed. These are great lessons. I'm absorbing them all. Another thought that I was thinking was that our body knows. So it's not just the logical brain. It's like our feelings. And uh, we know when we're not really sticking to our word. We know when something feels off. We know that, oh, that registered as a red flag, but I'm walking past the red flag. Yeah. And I think just the other thought I'm having is that it's just so useful to feel like you're supported and that you're with people who understand the struggles that you're going through. And I'm talking about the community that you have built and the atmosphere that you've set up inside the community that there is no feeling of competition, which is really interesting because you have some very high flying entrepreneurs in there (laughs) and successful people, but it's just a very giving fact base, but also warm community of people. So again, thank yous are in order because Mm -hmm. that's a safe place to grow. That's a place to experiment with different parts of your identity that you haven't yet revealed that maybe are are just part of your vision board right now, Mm. but you want to see how did somebody else do that? And wow, they look kind of like my age or they kind of talk like me. These kinds of things are really Mm. important too. It's, I I found it's not just a self journey. It just helps to know that you're not alone and that this is not insane what you're doing, trying to put yourself out as an entrepreneur, as an authority figure, as a leader of your own tribe. It takes guts and it takes, this being kind of mostly in order. I'm <laughs> for those of you not looking at the video, I just made a circle around my body and my face because there's so much involved in putting yourself forward in a courageous way and building something brand new just because you thought yes. it was a good idea. You know? Absolutely. Uh, and and the thing is with that really quickly is you should take that on as something that drives you. Because you're absolutely right. It is a lot. It's confronting. It's challenging. It's scary. And 90% of it is outside your comfort zone. 
But what I got a long time ago and what I remind myself every day is like life is so short and precious and it's it. it's happening now. We tend to have this kind of hum in the background of our lives that like w- this isn't actually life. We're getting ready for it. And this is it. It's happening right now. This is our life. And it goes by so fast. I mean, COVID and 2020 is already two years ago. And I bring that up because it's like people are reflecting on that. I was like, wow, that was already, it's been two years. And I know so many people that have quit their jobs and followed their passion or started their business in that time. And I know a lot of people that are still thinking about it, still waiting, getting ready to get ready. And like, this is our freaking life. You're in the game. It's happening. And to be an entrepreneur, we need to be driven by that unknown. That's what needs to drive us. That this is going to be the most challenging, scary thing in my life that I've ever done should be driving us. Because what that means is that when you finally do it, who you will have become in the process is everything. Who you grow into is undeniable. And that should be the most exciting driving thing because I look back at the 14 year prior version of me and I look at myself now and I look at who I've become and I'm so grateful. I'm so like proud and so content and so satisfied because all of it was discovering more about who I am. What else can I do? Who am I really? What am I capable of? Can I do this? I don't know. Let's find out. And I'm pushing myself, not in a, not in an efforting forceful way, but I'm, it's like I'm, I'm venturing a little bit further into the Amazon of the unknown and making the unknown known and discovering more and learning more and learning most about who I am. That should excite everybody here to see, let me see if I can do it. Let's find out. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think I'm just going to add again, like not just self-development, it's also James's teaching and style of teaching has also transformed my way of being a psychologist and how I work with my clients because I think now I really look at all of the different potential ways of explaining and things happening that there's so many different ways that a single event or problem can play out that it's almost not worth stressing out about because we're just going to see, you know, we have a role, but we're not the only ones involved. The universe has a role to play. Mm -hmm. Past has a role to play and just chance has a role to play. But then it kind of highlights how important it is for us to be aware of what we want to have happen, that we need to be driving the vision for the outcome. We might be experiencing a pretty nasty problem like second story about to cave in on the first story. (laughs) But, you know, at a certain point, like you described, you just got calm with yourself and decided, okay, like, how do I want this to resolve? How do I get myself to the end vision that's Mm -hmm. beneficial to me? So really, to my listeners, you know, my general (laughs) spiel, which is, you know, reduce the stress so that you can see more clearly and go for it you know, go for the dream, build the dream, even as your building is going to get bigger, but know that there are people like James and me out here to support you. James, can you now describe the kind of ways you help people who are wanting to get into a business online and what you have available for them? Yeah, of course. Uh, Absolutely. So, um, you know, today I, I, I teach what I've built and done. And that is a business around your, your knowledge and your expertise. Whether you want to put that in an online course, you want to take on one-on-one clients, you want to create a membership or group coaching or, or anything of that nature. I've done it all. I've seen it all. And um, I've gotten really good at doing it and teaching others how to do it. Because as you kind of alluded to, it can be challenging. It's a whole new world. To, to get ourselves into. And for 
people just getting started, it's like this rite of passage. It's this first step that you cannot go around. You cannot skip. You can't do the others and come back to this. It is the first step and is a pretty crucial step. And it's the step of which direction you're going to go in, which niche you're going to choose. You know, again, doing this for so long, I've seen so many changes in the marketplace. I've seen so many people come in and build incredible businesses. I just interviewed someone um, for my podcast. Her name's Christine Riche. She's also in the, the Next Level community. And she had offline workshops that she was doing teaching photography. And COVID hit, so she couldn't do these workshops anymore. So she took them online and created an online course. And in two years, the first year was like all testing it out. She did her first launch, did $6,000, then did $10,000, and uh, already was making more money than she was doing the offline workshops with like a fraction of the work. Last year, she did $290 something thousand dollars in sales with this program. <sighs> two years. I mean, that's unbelievable. Shy of two years, like 18 months. And one of the things that attributed to her success is she knew, I'm not the only ph photographer out there. So I need to get specific because when I get specific, I'm specialized and I stand out. So her program is Milky Way Photography. How to take photos of night of the Milky Way and created a $497 program and sold it out like you wouldn't believe. And that's the power of choosing your niche and choosing the right niche. And I want to help people with that. First step is the most important step. And I do a two-day training. It's a $300 training, and it's aptly called Nail Your Niche. It's a two-day process. I've been doing this for like three or four years now. We've had thousands of students go through it. And I walk you through a process, which really gives you this experience of your niche being revealed to you, like it was there all along. Like, this is the thing I was meant to do, and it was so obvious. It was right under my nose. And getting the permission, the validation, the confidence, the clarity, the certainty to move forward. And that gets so many people into action once they have that locked in. There's things I can share with my students that join on how to validate the niche, how to prove that it's going to be profitable, and how to really take the next steps from there. But it's so important. Now, we're running this April 19th and 20th, 2022. Live training. You get the access to the recordings and a couple of resources that I have available to you. Until April 19th, I'm doing a special deal. It's just $97. After that, it goes back up to 300 bucks. It's $97. But here's the best part. For anybody that wants to do this, anyone that knows they need to nail your niche, like I just ask people, if you don't know on a level of nine or 10, 10 being high, the level of confidence and certainty and clarity that you have the right niche, like if I, if I asked you and you're like, oh, that's like a five, you got to be in this training. You got you to fix this. Because if you don't know what you're known for, if you don't feel confident for what you're known for, then no one else is going to know what you're known for. And if they don't know what you're known for, they're not going to want to work with you. It starts with you, always. So here's the deal. For anyone here who joins, if you don't actually nail your niche, like get it to a 9 or a 10 by the end of the training, I'll give you your money back. For a lot of you listening, this is the first time working with me, and you may be wary, skeptical, that's totally fine. So... If you don't get the result that I'm promising you here in this training, I'll give you your money back. And you get to keep the trainings, you get to keep the recordings, you get to keep the resources I give you. There's no um, risk whatsoever, okay? So, um, Christine, I think you have a link for your listeners. Yes, I do. And I want to encourage our listeners that if you have like a dream inside, you know, if you have an expertise that you've been thinking throughout the COVID years, oh, I really should get something online. I should really just test this out and see if I like doing this, if this would help people online. I really recommend that you start learning from James and also that you sign up for this program. I found that James's programs are incredibly generous because they give you strategy, they give you the reasoning, they give you the layouts for the steps that you might need to take, they give you the language that you might borrow or try out for yourself if you're feeling like this is, I've never done anything online before, that really James is the complete teacher and very generous with what he shares. So I just want to back up that Nail Your Niche is a great way to start and 
I hope those of you who feel the calling to do that really join. And here's the link that we've made. It's make time for success podcast.com slash growth. I chose the word growth because I thought niche is kind of a funky word. So again, it's make time for success podcast.com slash growth. If you go to that link, you will see James's page about the program, a reminder about the dates, which are April 19th and 20th, where he's going to be doing this full out live training. Again, I encourage you to join and start learning from James in this kind of way. And then you might want to mark your calendars for June 2nd, because June 2nd is when we kick off a three-part live training that is absolutely free on where to go once you have your niche. This is how I've been teaching thousands of students how to hit the ground running and grow their digital product-based business the right way. We call it the rise of the digital CEO because your business online, digital, needs you in that CEO role because it's the role that you fill in your business that will determine the results that you receive. And in this three-part training, I'm going to give you the entire process, strategy, the mechanics of how we're able to run, scale, launch a digital product-based business and how our students have been able to do it in like any niche, any market imaginable. And so you're going to walk away with a whole plan of like how to actually do this. Um, it's not just like, oh, I just now create a product or I create some content or stuff like that. That's what a lot of people are doing. There is a process and a strategy for marketing, for building an audience, and for getting people to actually pay you for your stuff, for your knowledge, for your expertise, for your mastery. And I'm going to show you how that's done. That starts June 2nd. Yes. Uh, James loves doing live events. He's awesome at presenting, setting the right vibe, bringing on amazing guests, teaching great content. And I just want to thank you again, James. I'm going to wrap it up by encouraging our listeners to stay in touch with you, keep learning from you. You have a, a beautiful podcast. That is how I got connected with you in the first place. And, you know, I oftentimes when I'm recording teasers for this, say the Mind Your Business podcast, because it has a, the kind of <laughs> phrasing of make time for success. Uh, but it's also just my go-to podcast for learning about business, but also learning about the mind, the body, different philosophies of getting things done, really. So I want to tell my listeners that there's this awesome trove of information that James has built up in his podcast mind your business too. Yeah. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. So we're about done with this beautiful conversation. Thank you for all the lessons here and elsewhere for me and for my listeners. Thank you so much, James. Yeah. Thank you. I had a blast. Okay. Terrific. And thank you listeners for being here for your loyal listenership. And I will see you next Thursday when the next episode drops. Bye. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Make Time for Success podcast. If you enjoyed what you've heard, you can subscribe to make sure you get notified of upcoming episodes. You can also visit our website, maketimeforsuccesspodcast.com for past episodes, show notes, and all the resources we mention on the show. Feel free to connect with me over on Instagram too. You can find me there under the name Procrastination Coach. Send me a DM and let me know what your thoughts are about the episodes you've been listening to. And let me know any topics that you might like me to talk about on the show. I'd love to hear all about how you're making time for success. Talk to you soon.